All right, so move on to the uh, next talk. All right, so the next talk was uh, is uh, uh, neural probabilistic logic programming in discrete continuous domain. It's joint work by Leonard the um, Smith, uh, Pietro Dawes Matias, uh, Robin uh, Manhe, Giseb Maria, Angelica Kimek, and uh, a look at the read. Uh, I think Nena will give a presentation. Nena. Yes, welcome the speaker. Thank you. We developed DeepC Problog, which is a new programming language that combines the representative power of neural nets with discrete and continuous probability theory in a logic-based reasoning system. Our language is situated in the field of neural symbolic, where the general goal is to integrate neural paradigm with symbolic methods to get to the benefit where the symbolic methods allow the neural networks to generalize better and to learn without or with less data. Such an integration has already been achieved in the literature by logic tensor networks or the semantic loss function. Probabilistic Nessi, on the other hand, also tries to additionally integrate probability theory with the neural and symbolic methods in order to quantify the uncertainty of neural symbolic systems. This has also been achieved already with some systems, uh, but they are all limited to discrete random variables and discrete background knowledge. For example, Deep Problog or NeurASP. So what Deep Problog does is close the loop and really integrate neural symbolic and the complete spectrum of discrete and continuous probability theory. Now, why is the addition of continuous reasoning so important? Well, the main advantage or the main goal that we see is an application in robotics. Imagine a robot that has to navigate its three-dimensional environment. Then locations in this environment are already continuous. Adding uncertainty due to sensory noise yields continuous random variables. And it is also very likely that the robot has to adhere to certain safety constraints, constraints that should be or could be encoded in a logical way. Before we can introduce DPT Prolog itself, we do have to acknowledge some previous work and approaches that try to integrate these paradigms to some degree, as we are all as we are heavily influenced uh, by these approaches. And in the end, we will see how DPT Prolog ticks uh, all of the uh, boxes without uh, any asterisks. We start with deep probabilistic program, where the key idea is to just model or be able to model and optimize neurally parameterized uh, distributions, mainly continuous ones. And this is best illustrated with an example program. Usually you just import your favorite deep neural network library, Tensor, uh, TensorFlow or PyTorch, together with this corresponding pro probabilistic programming libraries such as Pyro or Probability. You define your neural network as a sequence of layers and you use its output in the, or as the parameters of a distribution. In this case, we modeled the temperature as a normally distributed random variable. What is lacking in this case is the uh, ability to reason logically and to encode logical constraints such as the safety constraints that I talked about earlier. Such logical constraints are then the domain of probabilistic logic programming, where now the initial idea or the main idea is to declare all your knowledge up front, your background knowledge, and then look at the probability of certain uh, logical statements or constraints being true or false. We can again look at an example program. Usually we start by defining the random variables at the top of the program. In this case, we have a binary and a categorical variable, humid and cloudy. This is followed by the definition of your background knowledge, the rules. We have a simple rule for when it is rainy, it rains when it is humid and cloudy. And this is then used in the definition of when the weather is good. It is good when it is either not raining or there are no clouds. Intuitively, a probabilistic logic program can be interpreted as programming a Bayesian network where the random variables at the top of the program are the leaves of the Bayesian network and the subsequent rules define the subsequent random variables in the network and also their dependencies. This is traditional probabilistic logic programming and has this, it, it has been extended to include the deep domain by just including a simple idea, namely, you allow the neural networks to parameterize your random variables at the top of the program. And you do so in a way such that the entire system, when you compute probabilities, everything is still end-to-end -end differentiable. 
So if we go back to our running example, then the only thing that really changes is at the very top, the fixed probabilities are replaced by identifiers of neural networks, which take certain sub-symbolic inputs uh, to predict the probabilities. What is missing here is the ability, again, to encode continuous probabilistic knowledge uh, and continuous random variables. To end the background section, we also have to talk about uh, inference in probabilistic logic. The state of the art goes as follows. You start by looking at your probabilistic logic program, which is a non-differentiable structure. And in general, inference of a query is sharply hard. Let's say we are interested in querying the probability of the weather being good. Then this is in a first step translated into a weighted probabilistic logic formula, which is then in the second step translated to a probabilistic circuit. And the good thing or the advantage about such a circuit is that it is a tractable structure and moreover also differentiable. But of course, the process of program to circuit is still sharply hard in general. Now we can actually go to introducing uh, deep sea problem which is built upon two unifying concepts the neural distributional fact or ndf and the probabilistic comparison formula or pcf an ndf is used to define random variables as you would uh, as we did before but now also continuous ones so in the first line we define that the number of detected quasars follows a poisson random uh, a poisson distribution where the rate is given by some possibly optimizable parameter in the second line, we show that we also support multivariate distributions by modeling the location of, let's say, uh, a robot, again, by giving it a certain mean value or mean vector, and where the uncertainty, the covariance matrix is in this case, uh, estimated by, again, a neural network. It is also at this point that we apply deep probabilistic programming as it excels in modeling these kind of distributions and allowing them to be optimizable. In the next step, you First define your variables, but then you want to use them in logical statements. And this is where the PCF comes in. In the first line, we express a simple linear equality constraint that says that the number of detected quasars should be equal to 10. This is logically enforced. We also support more general non-linear constraints, uh, such as in the second line, where we express that the location of a robot should be a certain distance away from, let's say, the closest obstacle uh, near the robot. This is also the kind of constraint that you could use to model the safety uh, constraints in a robotics environment. With these two concepts, we can look at a complete uh, deep sea probe block extension of the, our running example. We start by defining our random val variables as before, but these can now be both discrete and continuous. We also still support purely discrete logical rules, rainy when humid and cloudy. But we can now define what it means for the weather to be good in a more intricate way by using the continuous random variable, namely the weather is good when it is quite warm and it is not raining, or the weather is good when the temperature is uh, below zero and it is raining or it is snowing, in other words. We can also here see how the logical uh, reasoning gives us immediate generalization capabilities, as we can simply swap out the input to the neural networks by something else and use the exact same background knowledge to answer queries such as what is now the probability that this kind of good weather is true on uh, let's say mars inference in deep sea prob lock inherits quite a bit from the traditional or the state of the art of probabilistic logic inference so we do still take the program and convert it into a uh, probabilistic circuit a probabilistic circuit with indicator functions and this will come back in in a second but now, since we also introduced these continuous random variables, we need to weigh the circuit by the neurally parameterized uh, distributions that we defined in our NDFs. For example, if we want to know the probability that the temperature is below zero, the probabilistic circuit reduces to a very uh, simple single indicator function. And this is just weighted by the density function of the normal distribution of your defined temperature variable. All the integrations that we perform are approximated using Monte Carlo sampling, which is again an application of the powerful sampling techniques of uh, deep probabilistic programming. However, this perspective on inference does have its uh, drawbacks, mainly with respect to learning. The use of these or the presence of these indicator functions uh, blocks the gradient, and this is resolved by applying relaxations following the work of Peterson. 
which gives us a differentiable alternative where we also introduce a temperature uh, value that we will that we will again use later on. Uh, secondly, we also use sampling as mentioned, but this problem is easily resolved by applying the generalized reparameterization trick as we only sample the continuous uh, the continuous random variables and not the discrete ones. This in total gives us a expression of the gradient. And the most important about this expression is that we prove theoretically, this is one of our main contributions, that we can recover the unbiased gradients by moving this temperature value to, uh, to infinity. And secondly, we also showed that we can implement these uh, gradients very efficiently in such a way that we only have to apply back propagation directly on the um, forward pass result. Finally, DeepC Problog is a member of the Prolog family of declarative languages, which was over time, time extended to include more probability theory and to be able to express uh, neural networks. And because of this, we made the final or at least the last step in this evolution by extending the semantics of Problog and Prolog to the complete discrete continuous domain. And since DeepC Problog is a strict generalization of Prolog, we do remain a Turing complete language. Now to showcase that our way of doing and performing inference and learning actually leads to being able to solve new problems or existing problems in a, in a better way. We look at two of our experiments. The first one is, the, is called the neural symbolic attention, where we have as input given an image. And on this image, there is a handwritten year. And this can be just like on a real document anywhere on the image, bottom left, top right, and any, anything in between. And the eventual task is to be able to predict which year is on the image and also localize where this year and well, where all the digits of the year uh, are on the image. Importantly, while this looks like an object detection problem, we do not give any supervision on the actual location of the digits. We only supervise the uh, actual labels of the year from left to right. Our architecture looks as follows. At the top, we have our neural baseline approach consisting of two components. First, the regression component regresses boxes or bounding boxes for each of the digits from the original image. We model these boxes by uh, a generalized normal distribution, which is a kind of soft bounding box to maintain differentiability. So the, this means that the neural baseline is already a combination of purely neural and probabilistic programming without the logic. In a second step, we use these masks, these bounding boxes, boxes to mask the original input and classify the result. Moving down a level to the neural symbolic, we only let, add a single line of background knowledge that now expresses explicitly that the predicted boxes should actually predict it from left to right. This is already implicitly present in the neural architecture, but it is not uh, explicitly encoded. So that means that in the normal case, the neural baseline would have to implicitly learn that its predictions are interpreted or have to be interpreted from left to right. Finally, we also supervise, uh, at least in the neural symbolic case, the labels uh, in, a, in a, a logical fashion. Looking at the results starting from the bottom, the neural baseline is able to solve the problem to some degree. But the biggest uh, issue here is the inconsistency of the results, both, both the accuracy and the IOU, which is a measure of the quality of the predicted bounding boxes, is very variable. Introducing or going one level higher to our main non-probabilistic neural symbolic competitor, the logic tensor networks, where, where we also added the exact same line of background knowledge, we see that the accuracy and other metrics uh, go up go up quite significantly, but the variability problem remains, uh, remains to be there. And this is because LTNs are able to deal with continuous quantities, but not with continuous random variables because they are based on fuzzy logics. Going to the probabilistic semantics of deep sea problog then allows us to really give satisfactory results that are consistent uh, across the board. As a final experiment, we also looked at the generative capabilities of DeepC Problog, where we considered two tasks. First, we want to learn to fill in certain equations. So we have a data set of equations where the digits or part of the digits are given by MNIST images. We give this data set 
to deep sea problem and it was able to learn through its reasoning capabilities to generate correct solutions of these um, uh, equations. Then in a second subsequent task, now we were interested in the conditional generation of still filling in similar equations, but now in the case where some of the images are already given. So in this uh, example, the four is a given image and we want to still generate the other image that satisfies the equation and is in the same writing style as the uh, given image. This was done in DeepSea Prologue by just implementing a single new query or a single new rule. And because we have access to an explicit representation of the latent space of our generative model, this uh, allowed us to solve this problem as well without any additional optimization. To conclude, I will just repeat our main contributions. We proposed and developed Deep Sea Problog, a novel end-to-end -end differentiable programming language that supports discrete and continuous random variables and neural networks. We proved that our way of performing learning can be made unbiased to get to a sound learning uh, framework. And we gave an experimental argument as to why continuous random variables are actually interesting and might lead us to solve new problems. And for more information and details about uh, the paper, our experiments, and the code, please go to one of the following uh, links. Thank you. Thank you. We discussed, uh, discussed and uh, is online. Um, so, uh, Zhezhen, are you, do you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, go ahead. Um, okay, uh, so I'm Zhezhen uh, from UCLA. Uh, and first, thanks for the awesome presentation. Um, my brief summary is that this work proposes a probabilistic logic programming language called DFC Problog. Uh, the supports mix continuous discrete domain inference and learning um, under logical constraints. And specifically, the inference is performed um, using the weighting model integration framework, and the differentiable learning is achieved by reparameterization trick um, and continuous relaxation of the indicator functions. Um, and for me, the fact that the DFC probe block naturally handles the mixed domain uh, knowledge is very compelling uh, because that's what we need when modeling the complex real world. Uh, while most existing models can only do either continuous or discrete and do not have the same um, expressiveness as deep sea probe log. And something I'm curious about is the computational complexity. Um, it isn't clear to me what is the complexity um, of the two-step knowledge compilation at the inference step uh, and its dependency on the problem structure. Um, and I wonder uh, what is the computational bottleneck in this pipeline? Um, and my second question is um, in deep sea prologue, both inference and learning largely depends on approximations. Um, so I wonder if do you think uh, less approximation for example, by leveraging some recent results on tractable probabilistic inference um, can help the performance. Um, and in general, uh, what can be further improvements to deep sea probe log? Uh, and lastly, another question, uh, but I would love to see some more examples or tutorials uh, of deep sea probe log to try myself. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much for the, the great questions. Uh, concerning the computational complexity, I would say the main bottleneck right now is in the knowledge compilation component. So where we can transform the program into this probabilistic circuit, specifically the step where the query that you're interested in is translated into a propositional logic formula. It involves a grounding step, a logical grounding step uh, related to the symbol grounding problem. And it's really there that most of the hard work uh, at least right now seems to be uh, seems to be done and this is also the bottleneck in our, our problem of course the the problem itself is as i as i mentioned sharply complete but that is in practice the the biggest the biggest issue uh, about the efficiency of, of inference and learning uh, i would say that solving this bottleneck is very much a priority for our group um, 
as it would finally allow the field of probabilistic neural symbolic to uh, scale to more bigger problems or to bigger problems. And we are looking into various directions of approximations, such as the probabilistic, uh, the tractable probabilistic models uh, or sampling based methods uh, are also on, on the cards. But that is definitely a priority uh, in the future. Great, thank you. We have a lot of time uh, for questions from the audience. Anyone from audience? Uh, anyone, any questions from online? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Hey. Um, hey. So you talked about the generative um, capabilities um, where you infer the um, second number in the equation. Is that sampling then or do you do MPE or what are you doing there? Yes, because I mean, the, if you sample, then you may get incorrect results. Right? So what are you doing there? Yes. Yeah, so the, the generative model at, at the core is, is a VAE. And so we represent just the latent space of this VAE, which is a, a conditional one. So we have both discrete and continuous components, uh, which we now can express. And that since we have explicit access to this, this latent space, when we um, predict the given image, we already have its latent space. And then we can just immediately plug it in into this uh, or into the generative component for the next uh, image, which is also using the uh, discrete component then that the reasoning has to figure out which digit it is. So the style is kind of copied from the given image, but then you need the additional information of which digit you have to generate. And this is given by uh, the logical uh, reasoning. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Thanks. Okay, then no, no, thanks. Thanks again. Thank you.